morning and um, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, as sort of, I don't know if you all heard earlier, but we're going to use um, the chat box, um, which we're all using very well at the moment um, for asking questions, but we're really kindly joined today by three charities. Um, we've got Jackie George from, let me pronounce this correctly, uh, Sclero Derma and Reynolds UK, and from now I'm going to call it SR UK. We've got um, Alice and Emma who are representing and work at Thames Hospice, and we've got Michael from RNLI. Um, so we are yeah delighted that they are going to share their stewardship journeys, um, which they use for their in memory uh, tribute supporters. Um, this session is actually going to be recorded um, and is being recorded, so um, it'll be available to our partners on our charity support site afterwards. Um, and what the way the format will work is um, um, Jackie's going to start off from SI UK, and then what we'll try and do is we might answer a couple of questions at the end of each um, person's session, but the majority of which we'll try and answer at the very end. Um, I think that's all for the sort of housekeeping. Um, so, well, I can still hear the pings coming in. People are still joining. Should we wait a couple of moments, Sally, just to let them in, or shall we just? You. Um, I'm letting them in as as we go. So. Um... Right. As long as Jackie doesn't find it, she'll just keep clearing and we'll just keep doing it. Yeah, is that going to be okay? Yeah. Jackie. Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. Okay. Brilliant. So, um, without any further ado, I'm going to pass you over now to uh, Jackie from SR UK, who um is going to run through our little slides. Great. Thank you so much. So, hi everyone. I am Jackie from Scleroderma and Reynolds UK. Um, we are the only UK charity dedicated to improving the lives of people with scleroderma, scleroderma and Reynolds. Um, we aim to improve awareness and understanding of these conditions to support those affected and fund research to ultimately find a cure. So to start off with our in memory stewardship journeys, um, when a tribute is set up, on much loved. The first thing I do is acknowledge the supporter. Um, so this letter sends out our condolences for the loss of their loved one. Thanks them for setting up the tribute page in support in support of SRUK. Um, so this is personalised with the name of the deceased and their relationship, the amount raised so far on their tribute page as well so far. Um, this is a really important first step just to reach out and tell them a bit about the charity and send a handwritten thank you card. You can see there next to it, sending our condolences as well. It just gives that personal touch. Um, we've chosen the sunflowers. This is an international symbol of scleroderma. So what I will do then is um, leave a thought or light a candle on the tributes page from all of us at SRUK, just passing on our wishes. Um, this just lets them know that we're there and again, grateful for their support and sorry for their loss. So what people get if they donate through Much Loved um, and they opt into emails, they will receive this email. Um, this just introduces them to the charity and lets them know what kind of email content they'll be receiving because of that opt-in. Um, from then on, they will receive monthly e-news from us and tailored communications for in-memory donors. Um, for a final thank you letter, when donations kind of slow down and the funeral has taken place, I then send a letter or email to let the supporter no, just letting them know how much they've raised in the end, how these donations have helped to further our mission, where to look if they're interested in getting involved further in our charity, such as signing up for events or becoming a regular giver in memory, and importantly, expressing our heartfelt thanks for their support in memory of their loved one. I also send an email on the anniversary of the death of a tribute um, with this thinking of you graphic. This has no ask in it, it just lets them know that we understand that this is a significant and emotional day and we are extending our heartfelt support. Um, it reminds them how much they've raised in memory of their loved one, with their name inserted, of course, to be personalised, and how much these gifts have made a difference. Um, I've also sent out communication to in memory supporters about setting up dedication pages in memory of their loved ones at significant times. So such as Christmas or for us also at Reynolds Awareness Month or Scleroderma Awareness Month. Um, this is just a space where they can post a picture and write a message if they wish. 
and um, so support is not so much sort of the section where they can create a tribute page if they wish to. So around six months after a tribute page is set up, if supporters are opted into email, they will receive this automated communication just with an ask to keep in touch. Um, so six months after the setting a tribute up, supporters are probably still processing their loss, but maybe are ready to consider ways to stay connected to the charity. Um, so a well-timed email can kind of help them feel valued and provide them with a way to continue honouring their loved one's legacy and kind of create a longer term engagement. Um, so roughly three months after they received this first communication, a second email will be sent out to supporters just with other ideas of how to keep their in-memory fundraising going. Um, so offering choices like hosting a fundraising event themselves, leaving a legacy gift or becoming a regular giver, um, all in memory of their loved one kind of gives supporters flexibility. Um, they can select the method that they feel suits them best personally under their circumstances and their connection to the charity. And this kind of makes it more likely that they'll find a meaningful way to stay involved with us. Um, roughly three months after this as well, so this is span over a year after they have set up their tribute page, um, they will receive an uh, email kind of inviting them to take part in events in memory of their loved one, such as Ride London or London Marathon um, to raise money for SIUK, this in memory of their loved one. Um, this kind of includes a link sending them directly to our website for more information about how to sign up and what events are upcoming that they can participate in. It also has this top tip that they can link any ongoing fundraising on just giving to their much loved page. Um, so this kind of creates a single cohesive hub to set up and manage and promote their in-memory fundraising efforts. Um, this can just encourage more donations and family friends can contribute more effortlessly without having to navigate between multiple sites. Um, so this is currently the stewardship process I have in place for much loved supporters. From here on, they will receive tailored communications for in-memory in fundraisers, such as in cash appeals or ongoing campaigns. Um, yeah, so thank you, and I hope some of you found this useful. Yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you so much, Jackie. Um, there's a question from Maisie, actually, and um, what they, what Maisie and others are um, interested in is how much of this do you automate? How much of this communication is automated? Um, um, so for this, the only automated processes are the workflows, which are sent six months after um, the tribute page is set up or when the funeral has happened. Um, so everything else is personalised and I will send it myself. So I do think it's really important to keep those personalisations in, um, including the memory, um, the name of their deceased um, relative or friend or family member. Um, I think it's really important to include that as well rather than just kind of sending a general in memory email mm, absolutely yeah i agree um so ruth has asked um have these people who you communicated with are they the ones who have opted in to hearing from you yes yeah, so these people have opted in um unfortunately there is obviously only a limited amount we can do for people that um have opted out of communication from us and we can only send um the thank you letter to them just to let them know that we've received their donations that we're grateful but we can't kind of tailor our communications to people that have opted out yeah yeah um we've got some more questions coming in as well i might just um pick another one um and then we'll move on and then answer some more at the end um so uh savannah's asked have you tested different time periods for sending these emails you know at the moment you've kind of got a, a strategy there and, and a process but just have you done any testing? I'm, you know, with regards to time periods mm. or when do you send the information? This is a relatively new process that we've set up. Um, so this is only within the last six months. So it's, we've yet to see the whole span of it. Um, but we have had some interest from supporters who have, you know, reached out because of these emails. Um, but we can kind of tailor them in a different way. People might keep supporting closer to when their tribute page has ended, so we can send it earlier or um, can I hold them back if people haven't responded to any communication at all, but we haven't tested that as of yet. Okay, cool. Um, I think what we'll do is, there's, you know, um, a few more questions coming in. What we'll do is we'll we'll address these um, these ones sort of towards the end. 
Um, and what we'll do now is move on to Alice um, and Emma at Thames Hospice. Yeah. Yep. Um, hello, I'm Alice and I'm in the In Memory and Legacy team at Thames Hospice. Um, Thames Hospice is based in Maidenhead and we offer inpatient and uh, community care as well. Um, so Thames Hospice joined as a partner with Much Loved in 2019. Um, and we've seen a substantial rise in tribute pages set up over those past five and a half years and a good size increase in donations as well. Uh, as a hospice, the online tributes work really well for us. Um, and here is a quote from one of our supporters. So when I told you about the tribute page, I thought it'd be very, very touching. Sorry, when I was told about the tribute page, I thought it'd be very, very touching that we could do something to help the hospice in a way that they've helped us. We could give something back and it was really good to see the replies and the tributes. So just to give an overview of how the tribute pages have grown over the years and also the donations risen. In um, 2019, we had 52 tribute pages set up and raised just under 23,000. Uh, going through to this year, 2024, We've got 221 tributes so far and an income of around 200,000. Um, so we're still seeing good progress and we're up 14 tributes from this time last year and around 49,000. And just moving on. And in total, throughout the years, we've raised 900,000. <clears> Excuse me. Um, so just to give an overview of our stewardship journey, uh, when a tribute page is created, the tribute guardian will receive an automated thank you email. Uh, within those six weeks, if they've raised um, other donations such as funeral collections, they'll receive a thank you next of kin letter. We have a tribute guardian email journey in place that's automated. So within a few days of the tribute guardian being added to our database, they will receive the first email. And on the first email, we have a personalised thank you and we also offer bereavement support. So we've got our counselling team's details on there. <clears throat> Excuse. And the second email has been triggered to go four weeks after the first. And on that, we have a quote from a member of the hospice team. We have prize points and we have a tribute page feature as well. So. At the moment, we've got the virtual candle, but that dy that's dynamic content, so we do change that as and when. The third email will go four weeks after the second, and in that email, we mention in-memory events and other in-memory products such as the memory tree. Um, we will also send a second next of kin thank you letter around 12 weeks for any other donations that have been raised. So we'll give a collated amount and we'll also add any messages in that have been left in memory of that person. Um, but we found that our email journey to the Tribute Guardians has got around an 80% open rate. Um, so we're, we're happy with that. And um, we've also mentioned events to our Tribute Guardians and virtual gifts as well. Moving on. So for stewardship, um, we add the candles and the gifts. So when a page is first created, we'll light a candle to say that we're thinking of you. Um, we also light a candle on the first anniversary of their loved one's passing. And we'll send a virtual gift, which is just the heart here, on the first birthday of their loved one passing. Um, we also light the Christmas candles as well. So we often ask a volunteer to help us with those candles and we do set we do preset the um the candles as well so we can set the date that they will appear on their page um so for supporting events we help create the tribute pages when a supporter wants us to help them we're more than happy to do that we'll add photos to the page for the supporter 
um, and also any offline donations that they want added. So if people want a funeral collection added to the page, we can do that. So the total amount raised is in one place. Um, we also will link event pages. So if someone's done a skydive um, and it's say, for example, on Just Giving, we'll link that page to their Much Love page. Um, and then just we do mention the tributes in our first next of kin thank you letters as well. Um, and also in our memory tree thank you letters. And we invite the tribute guardians to our Light Up Life event. And this summer we also held a thank you event for our in memory donors in the hospice gardens. So moving on to connecting with funeral directors. We find this really important because the majority of our tribute pages are set up by funeral directors. Um, so we just make sure that we build those connections with them. Um, just to give you a few stats about the tribute pages supporting Thames Hospice that have been set up by funeral directors. We've had 781 tribute pages created. Last year, 63% of our tribute donations came from those tribute pages. And also around 582,000 was received in online, excuse me, online donations. Um, and 745 is the average online income received. Um, we've had around just under 27,000 non-monetary interactions on these pages as well. So if people have added a thought or a photo, a virtual gift, um, that kind of thing. So to keep in touch with the funeral directors, we hold an annual breakfast for them at the hospice. Um, during our previous breakfast, we've talked about uh, where we're at with Thames Hospice, what's going on. Um, Catherine has very kindly from Much Loved come and given us a presentation. And uh, we've done a question and answer session then as well. Um, we actively encourage the funeral directors to get email opt-in permissions from the tribute guardians. Um, and also we, during the breakfast, we do offer a hospice tour as well. Um, we also will send out our biannual newsletter in touch, um, just so the funeral directors know what's going on and we'll keep them in touch with any events as well. So for the external and internal engagement, just so that staff hospice wide know about the tribute pages so that they can point families in our direction. Uh, we have cards that are like credit card size that the clinical teams can put in their pockets to hand out to families when they feel it's appropriate or if a family asks. We also have A5 flyers, A1 posters throughout the hospice. We have induction days for new starters where we mention the tributes um, and we show the, the new starters video that we've created using our tribute guardians. Um, so our own memory and legacy team will also speak to the staff in groups and we'll add about the tributes into our internal comms as well. We've created um, an in memory and legacy staff training module as well. So this is mandatory for all staff and all volunteers. Um, so going forward, we're looking at stewarding the tribute donors and developing an email journey for them. So the people that do donate to the page, not just the tribute guardians. Um, we're also looking at integrating much loved with our don database Donify. And uh, that's in progress at the moment. Um, and we're updating our patient and family welcome pack um, because we find that many families do like to know about the in-memory offering. Um, so, yeah, those are those are what we're doing at the moment. Thank you. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. Um... Alice there, there's lots of nuggets of information and it was a big scope of sort of what you cover, especially sort of how you engage with funeral directors and what you're going to do going forwards and things like that. Um, yeah, uh, really, really good to hear all of those tips and ideas as well. Now, we do have a few questions. I'm conscious of time as well. Um, a lot of yeah, people are asking about 
Um, a lot of pages are created by funeral directors. I think that's sort of a common across the board. So it's really kind of you to share how you engage with with um, with funeral directors as well and holding that breakfast. Um, so yeah, the integration with Donify. Um, yeah, that's good. So I think what we'll do is if we carry on and we'll move on to uh, Michael at um, RNLI, um, then we will answer and I'll go through the questions and actually answer them a little bit more uh, coherently rather than trying to sort of scroll through with my eyes squinting here. So we hand over to you now, Michael. Perfect. Um, hopefully you should be able to see my slides. Yeah, absolutely, we can. Amazing. So, yeah, what, morning, everyone. So, yeah, I'm Michael. I've been at the RNLI since the beginning of this year, so working in the memory department. Um, for those who don't know the RNLI, it stands for the Royal National Lifeboat Institution, and we provide search and rescue services at sea since 1824. So we actually recently just had our 200th anniversary, which was really nice to sort of join during that period. Um, when it comes to tribute funds, so um, it's been over 10 years since we started this sort of journey and this offering. Um, and during this time, we've carefully crafted our stewardship journey at a gradual pace. So we've only grown. Michael, our sorry, I'm going to interrupt because I can see all of your slides. Um, I oh. don't know how everyone else can see them rather than seeing just one. I can see all of them. So I just thought I'd interrupt. I can't. I, just... can, I can only see the. I can only see the the main the first okay, slide. Okay, perfect. It's just me. I'm getting some weird view then. Oh, shut up! Oh, I'll get back I can <laughs> on. <laughs> no, no worries. Right. It's, only, it's all right. Everyone can only just see the one. It's only you, Sally. You've perfect. got a okay. super user. No, all good. Yeah, so as I was saying, so we've only grown our stewardship when resource becomes available or to meet ongoing supporter needs. One important thing that I've learned whilst um, being a marketer is finding a balance between not over promising and under delivering, but to have touch points that have a real impact and can be executed well. So when it comes to stewardship, we have two types of streams. So first up is our general stewardship journey. So as part of this journey, we have a few general touch points that um, supporters get once they've created a Forever by the Sea tribute fund. We have our auto fulfilled welcome pack that gets posted to the account holder and our three seasonal email delighters as well as our Christmas DM. So they'll receive them every year as long as they're opted into um, emails or opted into post. So now I'm just going to go through just a little bit more on these um, in a little bit more detail. So the first one is our welcome pack. So this sort of starts our um, stewardship journey um, where over the years we've sort of been fine tuning to ensure our supporters have everything they need during this sort of difficult time. So within the pack we have the booklet which I've put bits of screenshots on the slide here. Um, it's currently eight pages long and contains how tribute fund holders can use their fund along with different fundraising ideas and how to collect, handle and pay in um, the money raised. We also show supporters the difference their tribute funds make to the RNLI as well. Uh, moving on, so also um, item, other items in our pack include a certificate that the tribute fund holder can add the name of their loved one to and just makes a really nice keepsake that they can frame and have at home and sort of remember all the um, good things that the, the loved one is having in memory um, and raising money. We also add a collection box um, to help with donations at a funeral service. And these can also be used um, if the tribute fund holder wants to hold a fundraiser to raise funds in memory as well. So quite multi -purposeful. Um, And finally, um, once donations have been accumulated, we also provide a pay in slip um, that they can post to us just to ensure the amounts raised are processed as efficiently as possible. And they can also make payments online as well. Um, just moving on to our email delighters. So we have three seasonal um, delighters a year um, with the sole aim to encourage tribute fund holders to re-engage with their fund and share it with friends and family whilst building a sense of connection to the RNLI. We do have a six month suppression in place just to ensure tribute fund holders aren't receiving uh, marketing communication straight away, just so there's that nice breathing space between the initial setup and then the first alighter so they can get used to using the fund before um, before they receive the emails. Um, as you can see on the slide with the creative, um, 
uh, that we try and make our mass communication feel personal. So by including the loved one's name in the email header and adding the account holder's name at the start of the email. And the contents of the email generally um, talks about how to re-engage. So whether that be light a candle or send a virtual gift. We did um, try something new for our summer emailer this year, just by adding in some brand centric messaging. So just around showing them how tribute funds are helping the RNLI. And I'll just touch on the results a bit later on in my last slide. Um, then moving on to our Christmas DM. So we send our Christmas DM to our account holders, um, as I said previously, who have, have just who have only opted in to post. So our DM consists of a newsletter, which includes a case, which includes a few case studies from our tribute fund holders, just telling stories of their loved ones and how they are using their tribute fund. We also include a memorial of all the loved ones that we've sadly lost between the last newsletter and our sort of six month cutoff. As well as the newsletter, we include a lovely Christmas card, just sending a bit of a festive thank you and just letting our supporters know that we are here if they ever need us. Um, so that kind of wraps up everything on our sort of general stewardship journey side um, and sort of the, the second part um, of our journey, sort of our, pers sort of our personalised stewardship journey. So I can't take all the credit for this one. So we have our really talented team, our legacy enrichment team, but more specifically, our wonderful team member, Sharon, who hopefully is watching this webinar today. So Sharon does this amazing job with our personal touch points, but just allows us as a department to connect more with our supporters. So just quickly run through kind of what we do um, here in our stewardship journey. So we first of all will send a welcome email um, to the account holder. So this typically goes out um, one week of them setting up the tribute fund. So we'll include like a personal thank you and along with sort of the QR code that we'll also share in the email so they can share that on with friends and family and then um, numbers to some bereavement services as well. And then sort of within the same time frame window, um, we'll go on to the tribute funds and light a candle um, and just with a nice little thank you message. And then also whilst we're doing that, um, we sort of will schedule out a virtual gift to go out eight weeks later. So we'll kind of there, we'll share the legacy engagement email just in case they have any questions or uh, they need any help using their fund and we can help them with that. So sort of just having these sort of fund interactions is just a great personal way to show um, that we are just so grateful for every single fund created and really makes our supporters feel special as well. So then as part of the journey, um, we wanted to add a special milestone. So once a fund had reached a particular value. So for a fund that has raised over £500, um, Sharon will send a personal thank you card to the supporter. So we have received a few bit of feedback from that and just supporters just love receiving these like sort of handwritten cards and you know um from us and by doing so just really helps strengthen that relationship between us and the supporter and then for case study requests so we continually search um tribute funds that have regular engagement just to see if they'd like to share the loved one story and ways they they continue to use their funds so it comes really great to add in anecdotes to our um, christmas dm or any other bits of material that um are posted out or emailed out to supporters throughout the rnli um, so yes this enables us to speak to the supporters one-on-one -on -one as well and build those sort of personal collect um, connections as well as having case studies yeah to support that sort of wider outreach as well and then something yeah new that I've been working on for 2025 is sort of looking um, at an offering so sort of doing an RNLI college tour for tribute fund holders that have raised over £3,000 I think recently we've been seeing this quite spike in a few of our tribute funds that have been going over this amount so kind of just wanted to do something a bit special there for them so the tour will sort of consist of showing where our crew do all their sort of mandatory training to help keep them safe while saving lives at sea we hope by offering these tours it will allow us to see the vital work the vital work that we do firsthand which we hope in turn will see an increase in the use of our loved ones tribute funds and then ultimately build the affinity with the rnli so just moving on to my last slide so just wanted to share some learnings that 
um, I've definitely learned this year. Um, so just going back to sort of that brand centric messaging point. So um, sort of changing the content from sort of our usual light a candle and sort of re-engagement to just to show how important tribute funds are and what they may have helped to fund. So just looking at results just based on our comparing between our Easter email and our summer email, we saw like a considerable rise in engagement. So open rate was up by 45% and click through rate was up by 364%. So just doing that sort of switch out and just, yeah, sort of um, giving that bit of more of a tangible feel to, you know, seeing what difference they're making by having a tribute fund and sort of um, making donations through there. And then sort of moving on to our second learning, so uh, our standard versus personalised. So we, we just want to make sure that we cater communications with supporters um, based on relationship to the loved one. I think we've had a, a few bits of feedback from supporters in the past where we've used the term loved one, but they, they don't deem that, um, I suppose, correct in terms of their relationship with their um, person that they're doing in memory of um, so they, they didn't deem that correct maybe for a friend or a co-worker so we sort of cater that look at their relationship and we sort of will mold our templates and make sure that we're sort of catering on that in terms of personalization uh, and then lastly sort of cross-team collaboration so sort of utilizing other departments to strengthen our stewardship and approach and theirs so recently been working a lot with our philanthropy team so sort of working together just to ensure that we give the correct level of stewardship um, for our high level funds um, so yeah so just working together just to ensure that all stewardship is the same in the RNLI and yeah just making sure that our high level sort of funds aren't missing out on anything that maybe our high level pledges from our legacy department would be getting as well so so yeah that kind of sums up our sort of stewardship journey I feel conscious that I've probably blabbed for quite a long time so um, yeah if there are any questions then let me know but I will also pop my email in the chat as well just in case I can't answer anything um, but yeah Thank you. Brilliant. That's um, fantastic. I think that we've had some three very, really, really good um, presentations there from three very different sized charities. Some, you know, Thames Hospice is obviously a local charity and, and I can see some of the questions coming in about sort of local engagement and things like that. Whereas, you know, the RNLI being a national charity and then um, SRUK much smaller charity um, and, and very specialised, but still able to create that stewardship journey and really engage nicely with their supporters. Right now, fielding these questions, where do we start? <laughs> have you been able to look at um, any of them, Sally? I've, yeah, I have had a look at them. Um, so uh, somebody asked about, uh, will the presentation, I'm gonna go for the easy one first, will the presentation be shared? Uh, yeah, well, well, if it's all right with our fantastic uh, presenters, I'll share a copy of them on our support site, which will take a few days to get loaded. Um, I think there's also a few other questions around uh, maybe from some of our prospect charities or charities that are basic partners. So you don't have a full partnership um, service with us. So, uh, yes, tribute pages will be created by our FUNA director partners. But, yeah, you'll only know about them when donations have been collected and we process those donations and send them over to you on a monthly basis. If you're interested in becoming a more... Um, a subscription based partner and you want better sort of access to the information and you want to offer your own service then um, yeah get in touch with us and we'll give you that information. A few questions about database integration and I know RNLI have that I don't know whether Thames Hospice or SRUK have any integration. Thames Hospice are working with Donify um, and that's in progress isn't it? Um, Alice? And yeah, it's in progress at the moment. Yeah. So we yeah. um yeah, we're yeah, we're working on it. We've got um the triggers automated in dot digital, but yeah, in terms of yeah, complete integration with Donify, that that's ongoing. Hopefully soon. <laughs> Brilliant. Right. And we do have an API um which connects to um Donify and Beacon, but if you have your own uh, bespoke wet database or if you put your data into a data warehouse and want to connect it to that, then that's absolutely fine as a partner. We can offer you that. So just, again, get in touch and we can give you the API credentials for it. 
Um, there was a question about, um, and I think it was for Alice and Emma about um, how the journey is automated and if it still allows for personalization of names. Um, so at the moment, we um, do put the names into Dot Digital. Um, so it's not fully automated at the moment. It, but then, um, so we can put the first name of the person into there. We just upload it each month. Um, and then it's automated in Dot Digital. But it is, that's part of the integration that we're working on at the moment. And it is doable. So we just need to put that into place. Um, there was a question about keeping the dates down for each birthday and anniversary. So we don't uh, supply those dates, actually, but what we do is give you a, an alert three days before there's an anniversary coming up. So then you can kind of action it um, from there. So that's a bit of a platform uh, question. Um, there, there was a question about um pages that are set up by funeral directors um and because um you guys don't get the consent opt-in for those and that's because the funeral director is creating the page on behalf of someone there isn't an opportunity to present the gdpr marketing asked to them there is another webinar that talks a lot about um su suggested stewardship ideas for pages that are specifically created by funeral director partners and i've put a link to that in the chat so um Good to refer yeah. to that. Yeah, it's also in our support site um, under the helpful resources area and then previous modules. So it's untapped, uh, untapped funeral tribute potential. Um, but yeah, Sally says she's put it in the chat anyway. Um, and it is a really good webinar. Okay. Question for Michael. Are welcome packs given to tribute holders and uh, funeral guard guardians contacts? Uh, I want to say yes. Um, yeah, so that they're sent out to all the account holders. Um, and then I'm not too sure on funeral guardians. I know that we send out a funeral director pack as well. And um, yeah, I, I mean, if you just pop me an email, um, I can go and find a bit more detail on that for you. But yeah. So Amy has asked, um, it's difficult to show the work they do locally, especially as a mental health charity. Um, and Julia has suggested chatting. Um, I think uh, because they come, she comes from a similar organisation. So, yeah, feel free to connect together and chat about stuff that's specific to um, particular areas of work. So that's great. You've shared emails and LinkedIn. So that's brilliant. Um, a hospital charity can be challenging to promote the importance of tribute funds in hospitals and getting wards and staff on board. Um, actually, I mean, maybe Alice and Emma have experience of that. I know that they're not a hospital charity, but they are a hospice um, and they do have wards and they do have care staff. So how do you get around that? Yeah, I think um, we we try and have lots of kind of really good conversations with our clinical team in a variety of ways to kind of um, constantly get that fundraising message across to them. So as Alice mentioned in the presentation, we've got um, a mandatory training module for legacy and in memory that all staff and volunteers do. Um, and then it's also about kind of building relationships with those clinical teams by maybe like joining their team meetings, like asking, could we have 10 minutes for a mini education session? Um, and, um, you know, and, and just even like little kind of chats when we see them in different places around the hospice, if we meet them in the kitchen. Um, we also try and kind of get them on board, like with our events throughout the year and our campaigns. So often we might get them to be like a hero in our kind of in a direct mail campaign. Um, so and, and we we kind of really mix that up across all the different fundraising campaigns. So um, th there's lots of kind of different ways we drip feed that fundraising message. Um, and as Alice said, kind of working to think of easy ways like the cards. Um, and I think the 
one of our future plans, which we're really hoping is that patient welcome pack, because we know that a lot of our care is given in the community and we're not necessarily getting that message out as much as we want to, um, because 80% of the patients are in the community, it's, it's much easier to kind of get that message out through the inpatient care. Um, so yeah, looking at that patient welcome pack and and also just talking to clinical teams and because we know they're really busy about easy ways that and, and making them feel comfortable talking about kind of in memory giving and legacy giving. Yeah, yeah it's one of the things actually I've noticed I've been to Thames Hospice a couple of times I've not far from us and I've, I've really appreciated how much effort you've put into uh, you know really embedding tribute pages and in memory within your teams and I know it's been tricky sometimes at the beginning but you've really sort of continued to tap away and think of ways to really embed it and actually speak positively you know I know you often talk about the non-monetary side of the tribute pages as well because there's so much functionality in getting that in so I have you know it's something that I've really noticed there and and you know really appreciated how how hard you've worked to do that so yeah it's it's really good so there's just time I think for one more question um there there has been but before I answer that there has been a bit of chat about uh uh, leaflets that you put in with a bereavement card, um, that kind of stuff. Um, if you want to, I think it's Katie, if you want to pop that question on our our Google group, that would be brilliant because then people can specifically share their examples of leaflets with you through that. Um, there's also been some chatter about different databases and um, there isn't a specific um, connection with Microsoft Dynamics, but I have had a few charities that have asked for our API connection recently that are using that. So there's definitely charities exploring that. Again, that would be a great question for our Google group because then people can share and then maybe you guys can actually get together and have a chat about how you're managing that. Um, so that leaves me the final question that we've got time for. Um, do you find it's better to reach out before or after the date of the funeral? It's a really important touch point, but in our charity, we're undecided on the best timing. So uh, if any of our panellists um, have uh, experience of that or want to answer that, that would be great. Um, I think we usually do it beforehand. Uh, we usually try and get our first communication out as soon as possible. Um, and usually the funeral can be a few weeks or even a month after. Um, so just to get the initial communication and thank you out and send our condolence card is important then to wait after because there are communications that we can put after the funeral takes place as well. Brilliant, great. Oh, and just because I've caused extra confusion about men mentioning the Google group, it's part of our partnership uh, benefit. So yeah, you have to be a partner in order to be part of the Google group. Um, but uh, I'll, leave, I'll hand over to Catherine to, to finish us off. Um, I think well, it's, uh, well, it's a big thank you to uh, to our panelists. It's been really, really um, great to have you all, and thank you very much indeed. And thank you all for everyone for joining today as well. Um, if you do have any questions at all, then um, you can send that uh, to us at Much Loved. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you. Don't know if there's anything else to. I don't know when our next one is actually. Do you know, Sally? Often we tell them when the next. Um, um, yeah, is. the next one's in December um, and we'll be promoting it uh, within the next couple of weeks. So keep an eye out for that. Yeah, keep an eye out for that. There we go. Um, I think that's all yeah. from, from us. And uh, thank you very much indeed.